everyone. Um, I guess you know what this video will be about, judging by the title of it. So if you have really strong um, feelings with disagreeing, um, you don't have to watch this video because you know that it will probably agitate you. Um, so you can um, go ahead and watch something else. But before I start this video, what I want to say is that in no way do I want to encourage any negativity. Uh, this channel is completely against the idea of negativity and, you know, we can all have our own opinions in a respectful uh, way. So here is the thing. Um, I just want to express my opinion because I feel like it would be very wrong for me to just stay silent and not say a thing. Um, here are my... Primatex and I have started a series about Primatex colors before um, <laughs> there was you know some information passed on to us. So if you're wondering what on earth I am talking about is um, on Instagram um, an account called World Pigment Day I believe. So WPD for short, let me just double check. They um, made some tests, yes, yeah, so World Pigment Day. Uh, they made some tests and, so I don't know, maybe I'll show you on my phone. Um, they made some tests and discovered that so here is a nice little post about Amazonite Genuine. Anyway, so if you want, go check them out and read about the, the discoveries. Um, so it's a scientist who has great knowledge in minerals and watercolors. And they have um, looked into, uh, under a microscope, into these, um, in some of the Prima tags. Um, to see what is actually inside them and whether, because they're called genuine, you would expect them to be predominantly to have the genuine product in there, keeping in mind this line, the Primatech line, are um, quite expensive. So you would assume you pay for the genuine um, product. So I guess you don't have to be super, super intelligent or super nerdy to understand that what is inside here is not going to be predominantly that mineral because obviously they're rocks, they will behave heavier, they need, you know, binders um, to, to create watercolors out of them. Um, but I think it goes a little bit more further than that, where if you look into a polished mineral and it looks super pretty from the outside you get these bright colors I don't think that that is what it's going to be like once you start grinding it up into you know fine powder to create pigment out of it uh, and I'm not even a scientist so this is a I just think it's just common sense um, so for years and years I have been quite doubtful about the Primatech line and I was always kind of wanting to have someone, someone out there who has the knowledge about minerals and who has the knowledge about pigments and how to make watercolor, have a look at them, have a look at the ingredients and tell us what is actually inside. So when it came out that um, Amazonite Genuine, I think was one of the first that they looked at and Amazonite Genuine is my um, favorite like turquoise color. Um, I absolutely love it. So they looked into it and I think, if I'm not mistaken, there wasn't even the the mineral, there were no mineral traces in there. I think what was found instead uh, were traces of thalassinine green, I think. So of Taylo green, basically. And if you think about it, Taylo green is super uh, affordable pigment and it's actually something I would avoid by all costs because it's super staining on its own. But clearly some sort of magic has been done to this to create it into this beauty, which is, of course, applaudable because no other brand has um, 
done some of those stunning creations and let me say again I think that the all of the colors should remain because they are very unique uh, they're very beautiful but I think it is not right to claim that these are genuine and to be sold at the according price so of course you know as a, as a creator of these colors you don't want them to be um, copied across other brands which I totally understand I am a watercolor handmade watercolor maker myself and I don't disclose I chose not to disclose uh, pigments and I have been asked many times and people would say we would like to you know create work um, to, to sell and uh, we need to know the light fastness of it so we need to know what pigments there are so I decided to um, look at the pigment um, read up on it and um, give the information on the pigment light fastness so I would say this watercolor um, you know uh, is um, light fast from one to four um, and um, yeah so you know that that way I do let you know or I do let my customers know whether they're light fast or not but I'm still keeping the recipe to myself uh, because you know the I, I have made a couple of videos where I have been fuming about the idea that um, what's his name Roman Sismal the um, I think they're Polish watercolors have copied you know and it's completely obvious they have copied Daniel Smith moon glow a couple of other colors but I don't want to go into it now but the moon glow really really agitated me and I was completely supportive of Daniel Smith because I think it's just not fair to take a color that has been created specifically by Daniel Smith there is no moon glow anywhere else um, so yeah and then to have the nerve to call it there is it the Prisibis grey or something like that they called it after one of the polish artists which i think is just so sneaky and um how that artist could you know stand there with his name <laughs> uh for a copied watercolor that just yeah i have a big problem with this sort of thing so i have been super supportive of daniel smith and let me tell you i still love their watercolors and i still would purchase their regular uh, line uh, but I feel very different about Primatex since these um, tests came out and yeah I mean like I said you know everyone is allowed um, their own opinion uh, you don't have to agree with that but I feel that as a customer when you're paying for a product that is claimed to be genuine you expect there to be um, you know a substantial amount of that genuine product and I understand that you would have to mix it with other things to to kind of maybe make it into a watercolor like the the binders but um, in the response from Daniel Smith to to this um, it was a bit of a hissy fit <laughs> and yeah so in that response he said that uh, because it is impossible to keep the um, mineral watercolors the same every time and to have that consistency they would have to bump it up with other things which is also understandable but I didn't expect that like in the Amazonite Genuine to be you know a a another cheap pigment in there uh, to make this watercolor so that's a completely different thing also uh, I would like to say that what turned me away from these prima tags is not the the actual tests that were done because I think the person was very respectful very professional in their way um, of doing it and also comes across you know as someone quite intelligent the way they they did the test the way they explained it and it, um, yeah, it, it was a question of uh, benefit of doubt. So I think 
a lot of people had that and and so did I and I was really curious about the response from Daniel Smith and honestly I thought there would not be any response because how on earth do you come out of a such a big problem like this if you um you know say um sorry made a mistake we will remarket them it kind of makes you lose the credibility uh, as a brand if you then also go the other way where you dispute the whole thing um, it also looks very bad and it actually I think the response uh, was pretty pretty bad it was very defensive it was very aggressive very unprofessional and I think that the CEO of Daniel Smith should never have written yeah, such a response, let's just say it that way. And um, they should have sat down with their marketing team and come up with a plan of how to resolve this major problem. And lying to customers is not a great idea because it kind of, even if you love the brand, it kind of leaves a very bitter taste. So anyway, um, go read it if you haven't yet make your own mind up about it. I personally will use up my uh, Primatex, which cost me a ton of money. <laughs> and I am not planning to repurchase them in this format. Um, this sort of genuine thing has to be taken off. Uh, and it has to... I don't even know, how would you go about it? You know, would we uh, want to actually see um, the exact pigments that he put in here instead of those uh, claimed genuine uh, minerals or would we just uh, be happy with him taking away the genuine aspect and remarket it um, you know as something else like imitations of genuine watercolors or inspired by genuine minerals that sort of thing I think like from the perspective of my own small watercolor hand handmade watercolor business i understand that these are very special mixes and he wouldn't want to um, share the recipe so that i totally understand i don't know how everyone else feels about it um, but i think in that case something has to give and what would have to give is the price of them and the um this you know <laughs> has to change the uh the, the labeling of them and claiming that they are genuine and that is it for today I guess that's all I wanted to say um, yeah it's um, <laughs> I think you know most of us love Daniel Smith so much so that we are kind of still happy to purchase his regular um, watercolors regardless of this huge big mistake that they have made they should never have called them genuine or primatex um this primatex line they should never have called them genuine because you know simply it's impossible to work with minerals i have been asked myself whether i'd be interested to uh, create watercolors genuine watercolors and my my answer to that is no because it is such a unpredictable material to work with. First of all, you know, one batch of a real mineral uh, will look will never look the same as as another batch. They it's it's like you know natural things. They're not perfect, and so that's you know one aspect. When if we're used to that consistency, we might not enjoy that. Secondly, they you know they need. A certain amount of work with them they are trickier to work with and you know final point and probably the the most important point like amazonite genuine and and many other colors when you actually grind up the mineral you will never get to that vibrancy that these colors have and they claim that they're natural so obviously something has to be bumped up but is it fair to say um I don't know, take a color that you're inspired by, Google some images and say, okay, Amazonite Genuine has a bit of that um, kind of like darker bits in there. So let's just throw in this, this, this pigment, bump it up and 
put a tiny little bit of the real um, um, mineral or in some cases my understanding is that in some cases there was like zero of the real minerals so yeah um, is it fair to do that and then claim that that's the genuine uh, product in my opinion 100% it is not and like I said in the beginning of the video I feel like you know I have to say something uh, as as a YouTube channel and as someone who works with watercolors myself I you know, I have a great passion for watercolors and I feel that it is absolutely not right to be creating something and selling it as something that it is not. Even though the colors are amazing, they're fantastic, no matter what, they are beautiful colors. But, you know, it's just, it's not fair. That's that's all I want to say to, to round up this, this video. I will continue with the... Primatech uh, series, regardless of, of this um, scandal, <laughs> it is a scandal, and no matter that the the CEO is suddenly sort of pretending like nothing has happened and, uh, you know, just going full steam ahead and making all these demonstrations and things, I think it's just wrong. It's the wrong way to deal with this problem. It needs to be addressed. It needs to be you know, it just has to be because I I heard from a lot of comments that people actually turned away from the brand completely and entirely, uh, you know, so yeah. So that is it. I will be mixing more of my hematite violet, um, genuine, but I don't even feel like saying this anymore, you know, I just, I just, I think I'm going to kick off the genuine bit out of it, I will just say Sedona, for instance, from Primatag, because they don't deserve to be called genuine after what we have learned, um, yeah, so anyway, I will be mixing oranges and other colors with it, and seeing what sort of mixes we're getting, just, you know, it's a, it's a fun way of doing color theory um, and exploring mixes. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you soon.